hi there it's week four my fourth directing class has finished today it was a very long day a lot of brain work and a lot of thinking and doing things that were strange and difficult and a lot and a lot of things to take in today because today we had a different director take us for the day a director called John O'Brien um, was facilitating us all day because he works with the Stanislavski method or technique he's a I don't know if he's a Stanislavski scholar but he sure knows a lot and we had a day of Stanislavski I, as a Russian person, uh, should know more or should have been more aware of the Stanislavski method, but unless you really study theatre, um, and not even theatre, unless you study drama studies or, I don't know, drama teaching techniques uh, or, you know, professional acting, you wouldn't really come across Stanislavski and anybody who isn't interested in theatre wouldn't know really about Stanislavski. I have always been aware of the name, of the, you know, huge, iconic person that he is because my family is Russian and I was taught from a very early age to love and respect the theatre and attend so of course I knew who Stanislavski was but I never really looked into... I haven't read his books. I read... he has three books but I've only ever read extracts out of one or two, maybe, and I never read the books yet. Yet. <laughs> but I hope to. It's just a matter of buying them, and when you're a student and have no cash, that's a little difficult. We... he kind of... John walked us through uh, the entire kind of... well, it would take probably months to talk in detail about every single... Um, step that's involved in Stanislavski's system of working with actors. But of course we couldn't cover that because we were there from 10 a.m. until 5 and that's already a long day but it is only one day after all. But I think we covered quite a lot. <laughs> My brain was working away trying to retain all the information. I, I learned quite a bit and I think I really love Stanislavski's system. So I'm definitely going to invest in the books sometime soon and I'm definitely going to read them and I can see myself most definitely using his system in my future productions. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm Russian and I have some kind of soft spot for this theatrical genius man who is very, you know, who's the definitive theatre figure in, you know, Eastern Europe anyway. When, well, I guess, like, he's, you know, super famous now because the Stanislavski method, developed by Konstantin Stanislavski, is what, um, you know, kind of developed in America into the method acting technique. But it was his kind of teachings that they, you know, took that from. But yeah, so we... it was the first time today also I read a part of Arthur Miller's The Crucible, which I probably should have picked up sometime earlier in my life as a drama student and literature student. Um, I was always aware of Arthur Miller as well, but just like fans and lovers of Sylvia Plath who refuse to admire or even read Ted Hughes's works um, because of, you know, how terribly he treated Sylvia, I felt like something along the same lines with Arthur Miller because I'm a huge Marilyn Monroe fan and if some of you don't know they were married and even though she admired him greatly as a writer and got to marry one of her you know biggest um icons uh got to marry one of her favorite people um sometime I remember reading years ago that he read through her diaries and firstly that's a big no-no and secondly he thought he called her a dumb blonde or that she was said something that she was stupid and that never sat right with me and I love her so much so I think I kind of boycotted Arthur Miller in my mind and it's hard to do when he's a good writer because now I'm seeing this I'm going to read Death of a Salesman soon 
and I'm definitely reading The Crucible in full now because today we kind of workshop around this one scene and we took it apart line by line and we performed bits of it and we tore it apart with a Stanislavski's kind of method. It was great, but I'm definitely reading the whole thing now because I like it and I'm very interested in uh, history because it's based in Salem around the time of the witch trials and that has always been a big area of interest for me. So yeah. Anyway, today I learned that I really like this play of Arthur Miller's and I really like Stanislavski's system and I will be using it later. That was what I learned today. I had some serious anxiety before today, um, so last night. Last night, when I was packing my bags for today, I had some kind of major explosion of anxiety. I think it, my anxiety, well, regarding directing and theatre, stems from my kind of imposter syndrome. I found myself thinking, why did I even sign up for this course? Why the hell are you doing it? Why the hell do you think you can manage this? Why the hell do you think this is an okay thing to do? You don't know anything. Um, and my brain just spiraled. <sighs> um, I talked to a friend in my course and he kind of calmed me down and then I just, what I have to do when I start getting anxious, you just have to distract yourself. It doesn't sound too healthy, but it helps me. But yeah, I went into the class and after meeting John and he introduced himself and he uh, made a few statements about how directors don't really know what the hell they're doing and the only way you can learn to be a director is to just go off and direct, <laughs> which is true. Uh, there's no really definite set, set of skills that you can just pick up and then tick off and say, okay, I have that, I have that, I have that. Okay, I'm a director now. Yay, gold star. None of that. You kind of do have to go off and do. You kind of have to just watch how people work and do yourself and eventually you will call yourself a director and pretend you know what's going on. But him saying that with about, I think he said 20, 30 years experience, saying there, I started off like not knowing what the hell I was doing. A lot of directors literally just show up and they call themselves directors and that's directing. A director is a facilitator, a counselor, a friend, a, a person wearing many hats in one room. So there's multiple definitions, there's multiple ways of doing it, there are multiple directors and directing techniques. So yeah, I guess there's no really definite way to become one. Which, you know, should be comforting for me when I have so much anxiety surrounding actually directing for the first time and becoming a director. But it's not comforting. I don't know. <laughs> the whole fake it till you make it thing, I'm kind of doing that but it's not comforting. It's not a comforting thing when people tell me, sure, everyone is just, you know, floating through life, not knowing what they're doing and just pretending they know what they do. That's somewhat comforting, but not really for me. I don't know what that is, but nonetheless, my brain is a strange place sometimes. I, d I don't know. It's been 22 years and we still can't make peace. Anyway, anxiety aside, it was a very good class. I'm 100% investing in books where they talk about Stanislavski's exercises for actors because his books focus on the actor because that's what you're working with in the theatre. So unfortunately, even though he's known as a director and dramaturg and, you know, this genius creator um, of this technique, he didn't really write for directors, he wrote for actors mostly. So you know, that, that makes things a little tricky. But there are books where people wrote down all his exercises and I'm 100% investing in that because today the first exercise we did with John was he divided us in half, half of the room stood on this side, the other half on this side. He said, this side, you are a mannequin hanging up on, on just hanging up, I don't know, he didn't really specify. He said, you're a mannequin these people are gonna walk over to you, take you off your hook, and carry you to the side. Go. And at first we didn't know what the hell was going on. We kind of laughed and 
the people kind of mimed that they were walking along with us and we kind of held them anxiously, worrying about where we're grabbing them and, you know, they were self-conscious and we were self-conscious and it was awkward and messy. And then he was like, stop, that was ridiculous. And then he showed an example and just flopped down on the floor and made one of our directors drag him across to the other side. He said, I told you to be uh, a dummy. So be a dummy. And so today I learned that if I ever in the situation that I have to carry or drag a dead body, it will be very difficult. I dragged people across the room when they were just, you know, just giving you dead weight. And it was fascinating and very difficult and it hurt my back. <laughs> and it was so fun also. And that was the first exercise we did and I had an image of myself doing that to my future company or students or whatever and having the best time of my life. So I'm 100% using this and looking into more of Stanislavski's exercises right away. That was fun and it just showed me how we as humans complicate things so much that he said, you know, his one direction was, you're a dummy, you carry them, and we put all these layers on top of, you know, being self-conscious, you know, apologizing constantly for dragging the person or getting their shirt dirty or, you know, grabbing them or hurting them accidentally when you were dragging them and the person was, you know, talking back to us even though they were supposed to be a dummy. So yeah, we, we really overcomplicate things and as a director in my future, that was a weird sentence, in the future, when I'm directing, I'm going to try really hard not to overcomplicate things and breathe a lot because we overcomplicate things so much in our daily lives already that you don't need that on stage where there's, you know, characters and fantasy worlds and symbolism anyway and metaphors and whatever else. It's already complicated. I did end up writing about 11 pages in my notebook, which was the most I've ever written in this course so far. Just kept writing and writing. I'm very happy that I enjoyed these classes because if it was a system that I really disliked or couldn't see myself ever working with, that would have been very disappointing to me because as I said, you always heard, I always heard of Stanislavski and the Stanislavski method. So if I hated it and didn't like what he was, you know, what he was developing or talking about, that would have been sad. But I do like it. He seems like a nice guy, a fine chap. I guess I'm feeling a tiny bit more, <sighs> by tiny bit more, I mean like, I'm just saying that to comfort myself and it's like this much comfort. That I have finally decided on my play that I'm going to do for my project. Because if I, when you keep a thousand options open, it gets so overwhelming, especially if you're someone who deals with anxiety and self-doubt, that when I had all these plays I could do in front of me and knowing I have this project to do that I will be judged on next year for this course, and overthinking all the plays you could be doing or should I do this one or should I do that uh, and keeping this one that I thought maybe I'll do at the back of my mind. No, scrap that. Stop overcomplicating things and freaking yourself out. Just do the one you really like and you wanted to do and just stick with it. So I'm doing it. I'm gonna do True West by Sam Shepard because I love that play and very sadly Sam Shepard died this year so it'll be like a little tribute to him of deciding to do that play this year and maybe start on it in the next two months, I don't know, because this year is about to go out because it's November. But it'll be a little tribute to him, seeing as he did just die in the summer. And I really do love this play and I think you should work on things that you really love and are passionate about because what is the point in investing all the time and effort and, and money, you know, when you have money because you won't when you work in the theatre. But yeah, what's the point of investing time and money and effort into something that you absolutely hate and dread? That is ridiculous. 
so I'm going to do this play because it's mostly just two actors, which is easy enough to find, even though I have no actors right now. Um, it's mostly two actors, and it's a wonderful play, and I love it a lot. So that's going to be my play. I'm going to try and... I'm gonna try and find as many recordings of it online as I can and watch those, reread the script, um, and yeah, prepare myself mentally. Oh my god. I'm not gonna overthink that right now. This video is getting quite long, but we did a lot today and my brain is still going, still going after all the discussions and many, many techniques and steps. <laughs> so yeah, today was a good day. I, I'm just really glad I'm not hating these classes. There would have been nothing worse than signing up to this course and being anxious about it and experiencing imposter syndrome and anxiety and hating it. So at least I'm experiencing imposter syndrome while loving it. So that's week four. Feeling good, feeling anxious and scared, but prepared or, or not, I don't know. Just feeling. It was it was a good day though. Yay for Stanislavski. And yay for me deciding on my play. So that's week four. I'll be back for week five. Thanks for watching.